Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Jesus is Holy Rock Ministries, where we preach Christ, Christ crucified. Here is your servant Lillian, and today we are going on with our series, the Believer. We are looking to part thirteen. We are looking into part thirteen. What to pray? What to pray? Please stay tuned until the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please smash that notification button so you will never miss anything we post. Let's get into it. What to pray? As a new believer in the faith, most of the time when you ask what to pray, people always respond to talk to the Father or just pray to God or just pray. But today I want to help you by answering that question for you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16 to 20 says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe, according to the working of his mighty, mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 19 says, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul offers two intercessory prayers for intercessory prayers for the Ephesian believers. In this amazing letter, though he was accustomed to ask God for extravagant blessings in, in other letters like in Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 or Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 or Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 14, as you read Ephesians, it seems like he goes from prayer to praise and back again. He begins a prayer in chapter 1, then leaves it in a praise of Christ. He concludes the prayer at the end of the chapter 3 and caps it off with a wonderful doxology. Doxology, what that means? That means, uh, it's, a, it's a Greek, doxology is a, a Greek word uh, take out of doxologia. And the basis word is doxa, meaning glory, or logia, meaning saying. So, doxology is a short, a short hymn of praises to God in various forms of Christian worship, often added to the end of canticles, psalms, and hymns. These prayers are a bit intimidating. We cannot pray like that ourselves, except by imitation of the Apostles' prayer. But it's marvelous prayer. It teaches us how we have to pray for ourselves and for one another. No puny sentence prayer, but a grand, visionary, far-reaching far prayer for ourselves and our brothers and sisters that begins in their, their spirit and ends at the right hand of Christ and with the glory of God. Dear brothers and sisters, we need, high need to pray appropriate, thoughtful, meaningful prayers for me, for you, and for other uh, Christians. These prayers of Paul help me do that and i trust you they will help you too my brothers and sisters these prayers are complex and glorious in their descriptive detail but because of the abundance of detail it's hard to see the forest for the trees so let's step back and look at the big the big picture of these prayers i hope that the way i put it will help you get a gist of it First of all, he said, May God give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. May he give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That is one, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Why? So that you may know him better. 
Secondly, he said, May you receive insight. Why? So that you will comprehend and appreciate your hope, your inheritance, and God's power. Thirdly, he said, May he strengthen you, may he strengthen your inner person by his spirit. That is, may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. Why? So that your, so that you may be filled with God's fullness. Fourthly, he said, may you yourself be anchored in love. Why? So that you can comprehend and experience Christ's love. Why should we do all this? Why should we do all this? The doxology of, of or the reason why is that God may receive glory. The reasons that God may receive glory, that is in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. This tells you where Paul is going in his prayer. Notice that he prays for insight, inner strength, and love for the believers for the purpose that they will comprehend, understand the truth, know God better, and be filled to overflowing with God. Meaning, I keep asking that God our Lord that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Notice the twofold way Paul described God. He said, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. This doesn't detract from Paul's teaching about the divinity of Christ. Paul is just making the point that the praise to the God that Jesus himself revealed to us. Then he said, the glorious father or the father of glory. Elsewhere, God is referred to as a, the king of glory. That is Psalm chapter 24 verse 7 or Psalm chapter 24 verse 10. And the glory and the God of glory, that is in Psalm chapter 29 verse verse 3 Jesus himself is called the Lord of glory in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 so what does this phrase signify the father is full of and surrounded with glory I think of God revealing himself to Moses on the Mount Moriah uh, on Mount Sinai in fire and smoke the Shekinah glory of God is great, inexpressible, inexpressible light. Paul prays to the Father of glory. Paul is praying that they will finally get it. Have a, break, a, a breakthrough in their comprehension and understanding of what is all about. What it is all about. Paul prays that their lives will be filled with God. Which is another way to say, know him. And have Christ dwell in your heart. These are the ultimate prayers, prayers that shepherds pray for the folk in their care. Whether it is a small group or a class or a congregation. These are also the kinds of prayers that Christians pray for themselves and for one another. You will notice there, is, there are spirit anointed prayers. At the end of this first and third chapters, these prayers apply to us today just as much as they did to the believers at Ephesus because they were given by the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, please start by praying these prayers for yourself and you will see the spirit of wisdom and revelation of God being manifested in your life. You will begin to see things in the Bible you have never seen before.
just try it and come and tell me <laughs> try it and come and tell me take your time take a week take two weeks three weeks praying these prayers and you will see how your life will change and then you will come and tell me you will come back in this on this page and tell me i call you blessed never forget the word of god is our final authority this is our, your servant lilia shalom